at this point of his marriage, had lost most of his hearing during this time. And yet they still were getting along together, celebrating this great anniversary. Their family came from all over and enjoyed celebrating through the mid-morning into the afternoon. And finally, sundown, all the family went home. Bessie is her name, and Bessie and Ted decided to walk out on the front porch, sit down in a swing, and watch the sunset. The old man pulled his towel off and leaned back and didn't say much. Bessie looked over at him and wondered to him. She said, you know, Ted, I'm proud of you. Because he had taken his hearing aid off, he didn't hear it quite clear. He became puzzled and looked back at him and said, well, Bessie, I'm tired of you. <laughs> I, 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 I laughed at that, but now, now let me tell you, let, let me tell you, uh, sadly, sadly, a lot of marriages move in a position like that. that that's sad. And, and that's because we lose, uh, we let the flame go out, just like when we talk about in Christianity, don't let the lights burn low. Uh, they, they will burn low in marriage. And one thing we do is we become so used, we become stagnated. We become used to each other. And so when I read that, I, 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 uh, I almost, I said, it can't be me and not because we, we ain't that old. <laughs> and we, 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 <laughs> we may have been around. But that's true. That's sad. It's, it's a very sad way. But, but uh, what God wants, uh, and Paul enumerates this in the text, what God wants is uh, for marriages and homes to be vibrant. Um, and I know that we have some singles and we have some young people who are uh, looking forward to getting married. I know we have married couples who are older, and I know we have marriage couples who are younger, but this, this type of lesson is designed for all. Because if you, 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 you can get something out of each of these to, to fit your situation. So let me read, uh, and I appreciate uh, uh, Brother Starks uh, for, for those very kind words. I kept pinching myself. He must be talked by somebody. Uh, uh, <laughs> I say you don't necessarily make it. And uh, Bruce Smith, thank you so much and, uh, for your for your uh, song leading tonight. I'm grateful to you for that. Uh, and and also Elder Denson, uh, I don't know. He just always takes things to another level. But you know what? That's a good sign that a man has a spirit has the spirit. Because anything we do, we ought to do with spirit. Uh, we shouldn't. Uh, we don't serve a dead savior. We serve a risen savior. Uh, uh, thinking back when uh, in Galatia, when Paul uh, was writing, what's applicable? I try to make that principle applicable. Paul say, uh, but if I, I if, but if while I seek to be justified by Christ. He said, we ourselves also found sinners. Amen. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? He said, God forbid. He said, for if I build again, which I, the things which I have destroyed, I make myself, so the devil didn't do it. I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live under God. He said, for I am, and all of us are to have that testimony. I am crucified with Christ. That ought to be our testimony. He said, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me 
and gave himself for me. That's personal, isn't it? Positive and personal. Let's read uh, again and appreciate uh, from Ephesians chapter 2. And I know uh, in, my, in my years of trying to serve the Lord, and normally when you read from Ephesians chapter 2, uh, the brethren won't stick their chests out. He said, that's what we're going to do. Put them in their place tonight. Now, this, this, this scripture, uh, the perspective, I think, has been missed over the years. In verse 21 of Ephesians 5, and we're going to try to just put a little something on the table to cause you to think tonight. He said, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. And therefore, based on what I just told you, as the church is subject unto Christ, so that the wise be to their own husbands in some things. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blame. Here's the take home. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it. And even as the Lord, the church. And so for a few minutes, I want to talk to you about how do we build strong marriages? Uh, some folk would say time would build strong marriages. But I, I, want, I want you to think about this, that I'm going to try to get at least three points that you can work with tonight. Well, one, one will be the first point will be the foundation of a strong marriage. What is the foundation? And then the fundamentals of a strong marriage. There are, uh, there, there are two that correlate. And then... There is fruits of a strong marriage. And I want you to see from the scripture that God has, 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 has what he has to say about the matter of marriage. I want to help you to understand that building a strong marriage is not so much finding the right person to build it with, but that you be the right person. Because as we look at each other, and, and, and I have experienced over the years, but that doesn't make me an expert, I'm not a doctor in marriage, that, that you have to look inward. And I know when we first got married, my wife and I, she said, don't use me tonight. She already knew I was. I was trying to help straighten her out. Brother, you, 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 well, if you go back and read that text, the text doesn't, God doesn't say, a husband, straighten them out. It's a husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loves the church. So it's not my job to straighten out. The only person that God expects me to straighten out is me. And once I can, and, and you know what? And that's a lifetime journey straightening me. I can't see her faults for mine. And some days I'm, I will admit to you that I do very well. But some days I fall short. And sometimes it's not some days. Sometimes it's every five minutes. 
I fall short. And so what you have to do is take a diff. we have to take a different perspective how we view this. Uh, in other words, what, when you get married, what, what, what is your perception? What's the outlook? What, what are you trying to garner in marriage that you can build and use as stepping stones to build a strong marriage? I know that some folks say, well, you know, they got perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. They don't. No such thing as a perfect marriage. All marriages have some ups, some have some downs, some have some upside downs. <laughs> but they all have their problems. But if you look at the text, the Lord mentions in these verses in some fashion at least 14 times and it seems clear to me that the essential foundation for a strong marriage is taking his word and making that word applicable to self. David said long ago, except the Lord build a house, they that uh, labor in vain that build it. Uh, it has to be built around what God has instructed us to have. In order for God to be honored in a marriage, we have to build the marriage like God says. And not like we think it ought to be. So our perception has to be clear. And, and when we start, when our perception starts clearing up of what the scripture actually is dictating to us and how we should live, and then we can concentrate on what that is. And the concentration is pleasing God rather than pleasing ourselves. Sometimes we take God all out of the equation. Now, let, let, me, let me be real with you. I know most of you all don't have financial problems. But those can be distracting in a marriage. They can be distracting in a marriage. So sometimes we may disagree about uh, what color we want to paint the house. Uh, go back to that word. The husband in the head, and so some brethren think that. Uh, and for years, when I when I first obeyed the gospel, some two or three days ago, uh, they, the brethren would say, "The Bible say we the head, so we got." Let me tell you something. You're not an expert in every everything, no how. Bread, we're not experts in everything. God gives us a challenge to lead the family by making us the head. That's a high responsibility. The bar is raised high. And I don't know how many in this society and even in the church that have failed that. Here's a brother that struggled with two plus two and he's talking about making the budget for the house. You ain't got nothing to make no budget. Yeah, but the Lord said I'm the head. Well, you're struggling with adding two plus two. How you gonna make a budget? If the wife has more knowledge about budget, let her make it. You, 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 you're going to make it. And reminds me of this country singer. He had been married for some 15 to 20 years. His wife had thought about leaving him two or three times. And every time she would think about leaving him, he would talk out of it. And finally, came to a breaking point in their marriage. And she went to him and told him, I'm going to leave. Well, he thought he had a good marriage. So he talked to her and he said, honey, man can't love you more than I love you. He said, don't I let you change the tire on the truck when it gets flat? He said, now don't I let you wash and wax my truck every Saturday? And don't I let you use my new chainsaw to cut the limbs and branches out of the tree? He, he said, put another log on the fire, honey, and come and tell me why you're leaving me. We have those. 
we have those. But uh, it's, marriage is real. And if you've been married any length of time, and you can be married two or three days, you, see, you begin to see the struggles in it. Uh, uh, but, but a true marriage, if it's going to be strong, it's going to have to, uh, to be developed. The foundation has to be what God intended for marriage to be. Uh, it has to, we, we, we can't put ourselves in it and try to navigate it the way that we think we ought to navigate it. Uh, and, and, and I know when the scripture was written, when Paul penned that uh, to the church of Ephesus about, about the husband being the head of the wife, that the cultures were different then. Uh, the woman was, was considered a servitude uh, to follow. Uh, but brethren, don't fool yourself. You, you are the head in spiritual application. You ought to be the one that leads the family to God. You ought to be the one that keeps the family to God. You ought to be the one that suggests home prayer. You ought to be the one that suggests Bible study time at home rather than wait till we get in public. That's your lead. But those things that you don't have any expertise in, leave them alone. Because that's why God gave you a helpmate. You the head of the house and you're going to make the menu. You, you, you can't pour milk over cornflakes, but you're you going to play on a menu. And, that, and, and those things began to frustrate your mate. Uh, because those areas that you dibble and dabble in, that she wants the responsibility, or your mate wants responsibility to those. And even when you dibble and dabble them, you may come up with a, with a plan that's sufficient, uh, at, just out of respect, uh, make your spouse aware of it. Let them get involved. In, uh, in some research I was doing, which is, which is odd. Uh, you can go on uh, churchofchristhistory.com and, and just look at the various categories there. But you know, uh, 20 years ago, the voices in the church were at a minimum. Today, 2021, they say the, merit, the voices in the church, church members, have risen 43%. Now, the Bible hasn't changed. God's word hasn't changed. His plan for success in a marriage hasn't changed. God still blesses those marriages that he ordained. He still blesses them. So what's changed? What's changed? Why has the statistics risen so high? People have changed. People don't have the same concern uh, for the uh, for, for marriage, the same respect. And let me tell you, even when we take God's plan, it doesn't make us immune from problems. I often say we are real people living in a real world and we're going to be confronted with real problems. You can do all you can. You can raise your children according to the word. And the Bible tells us, train up a child in the way they should go. And we can do that. But boy, when they get out from under your roof, they like Martin Luther King. Free at last, free at last. And they take off. And they do everything that you say, I never done that. Why are they doing it? Because the world has such a strong pull over them. Their, their associates, not, not, all, not in all cases, but many times their associates. Think about what you did, what I did. My daddy used to tell me all the time, he said, boy, you're the worst child I got. He had 11. <laughs> I was top of the list. But what brings us, what keeps us together, what builds when we talk about the funnel mill, the funnel mill uh, building block is love. 
and, and, and how that word has been abused. Lord have mercy. The word love is so easy, easily rolls off the tongue, but it's been abused. Let's, let's take, let's, let's get some scripture. Let's get a little scripture just to help you. Uh, I could be here all night dwelling on this and I already got my marching orders. The husband is the head of the wife. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I think that's where I want to go and just try to, um, we'll get this developed. But I'm, I'm just so grateful for your attendance tonight and taking time out of your schedule to come and be supportive of our uh, fall meeting. And as we get, get to going with it, it'll, it'll get better. It'll get better. But um, in verse 1, and I think all of us know this, I, I just want to read this for context and then, then I want to talk us. Not, 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 not take up many more, much time I'm doing now. Paul says, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels, 13.1. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, he says, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, I'm just a lot of, I'm all talk and no action. I'm just a bunch of noise. And when you look at, when you look at, when you look beneath the surface, a lot of these, that's, that's, that's what's happening. He says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, all knowledge, and uh, though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Here is, here is what we can make, take this principle and make applicable to a marriage. Paul says, charity Suffer it long. There is some long suffering involved in love. Amen. I know that because God still loves me. He's long suffering with me. And you know what? And I'm st I still haven't arrived. So he's still tolerating. He's still suffering with me. In a marriage, there has to be some suffering. He said, if you love a person, charity suffer long. There gonna be some struggles. There gonna be some struggles. If you're in love, if you love your partner, your spouse, you, you're gonna have to understand that. There gonna be some misunderstandings, but stay in love. Amen. And don't and don't do like you hear all of these folks. Talking about on the talk shows and the radio and everything. And yeah, if y'all have a misunderstanding and he don't agree or she don't agree, y'all have him sleep on the sofa. No, no, no. I told my wife that 50 years ago. I ain't sleeping on no sofa and you ain't either. And if you decide to sleep on it, I'm sleeping on it too. That only opens up the avenue for Satan to dig deeper. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't open up a wound that's not there. He said, charity suffers long, and charity is kind. And how much action, how much physical involvement does it take? To be kind. You sleep in the bed with him. You can't be kind to him. Amen. You're wearing each other's name. You can't be kind to him. Celebrate. Celebrate things that most most folk are not going to celebrate what a couple celebrate. You can celebrate small things. You can enjoy the blessings she enjoy. Those things are real. And that's, those are the fundamentals of a strong marriage. Joke about it. Then he says, charity does not envy. What I gain is for our relationship, what she gains. 
those are those are fundamentals that help to have. But I don't understand. And I know, I know, I know. But many fall on stormy times. As I said before, debts, lusts, business life, loss of interest, all of these things, they, they happen in, in life. They happen for real in life. So it's up to us. If you want a strong marriage, take those fundamentals and reunite that, that marriage. Reunite the love in that marriage. If it's worth it, and it is. And if you ask God to help, he will. Amen. He will. In verse 5, Paul said, And it does not behave itself unseemly. He says, It's not, it doesn't seek her own, and it's not easily provoked. So, 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 so those fundamentals are strong. They, they have been in there in the Word since the Holy Spirit had Paul to write them. They were true then, and they are true today. Amen. And the problem is we have come so advanced in technology and all we think that, that uh, we can, you know, they got this computer dating now. They can match you right up, put your name and hide in there and the color your eyes and what color you like to have your Girlfriend's hair is what these new modern colors they got now, aqua, uh, pink, uh, you know, and, and it'll match you right up. No, the formula is here. Amen. All of that other is just extra accessories. And then, with love, building love, and it takes, let me tell you, it, it, you have to build love. You can start out, and I know all of us, when we were young, we come out of the, the what they call the neighborhood, and man, we were seeing your girls, you were, everybody, all my cousins, and they used, we sit around and talk about it as boys. And I'm so glad we got adults in here tonight, talk about this boy. We wanted a girl with a cocoa bottle figure, Coca-Cola bottle figure. What we didn't know is boys talking about that, that after marriage, two or three years, you had two or three babies, you begin to look like a two liter. <laughs> well, that's good, but that's not where you put, that's not where you put all your land or your trust that. And then, and, and, and then uh, uh, the Bible says that True love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It, it doesn't think any evil, and it's not easily provoked. There must be some loyalty involved, and that loyalty is what uh, uh, what Moses or I you know, talked about in way back in Genesis. That's that leaving and cleaving uh, uh, process that we go through. That's the loyalty. Uh, when things are good, you're there. When things are bad. And when you can't even see your way out of it, that's where faith begins. And that's where trust gets strong. Trust in the Lord that will deliver you from that. that but, but that's a part of that. That's the loyalty. Leaving and cleaving. And then uh, after that, enjoy the fruits. There are some tremendous fruits in having a strong marriage. Uh, you, 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 you can be happy. Real happiness comes from having a strong relationship. You know, you heard the old cliche, when you can't go anywhere else, you can go home. Yeah, home. Amen. Amen. Have a strong home. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to talk about God in that, but I'm going to talk about uh, tomorrow. A house is not a home. Right. There has to be some other things involved to make it a home. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, the fruits of your labor is peace. And when you get older in life, you know, you seek peace. Amen. The Bible tells us we are to seek peace and pursue it 
But certainly when you get older, you want peace. You don't need that. It's a different challenge. Talk about us having high potential and all of those stuff. Some of those things we cause ourselves. They cause. Learn to have peace. Be at peace. Lay down at night and not have to toss and turn. Have some peace. Be able to walk around with a song on your heart. And, and those are the kinds of things. This comes from the fruits of a strong marriage. Support. You know, you can go on your job and your supervisor or some of your co-workers or something can, can give you a hard time. They, they can be jealous of you and you feel like you got to defend yourself. But you ought to be able to go home and have some peace. You don't want to walk out of that mess, chaos there on the job, and walk in chaos at home. You ought to, you ought to be able to have some peace. You ought to be able to get some comfort from your spouse. They, they ought to try to be comforting to you, help you understand, rather than, how would you like it if they sit down and it's gotta be your fault. <laughs> I knew how you are, if you wouldn't like, that way it wouldn't, no. It may be your fault, but have some sympathy. <laughs> yeah, you want some encouragement. When, when, we, when, when you have to walk out of a job or off the street or wh out of whatever environment you're in and go home and have the same day, it's like they're handing you a gun and, and you make the choice. Here's the gun and here's the bullets. You know, you, you, you don't have to be put in a situation like that. Not when you have, because when you do that, God's, uh, the, the honor of God is absent from the marriage. Bring maturity. Love helps us to mature. Love does a lot of things. And when we put it in the context that God speaks of it in, in the text, in our text, and in the Bible, you can see what God does. Love helps us to be responsible. Because Jesus was responsible. And he loved us. He, and he, God loved us. And the Bible says, greater love has no man than this. The one laid down his life for his friends. I'm telling you, church. Times are tough. Satan is busy. He wants to destroy what you have your life. Yes, he, does. he wants you to be miserable. You got to see this. He wants you to be miserable. He doesn't want you to make a full commitment to following Christ. He wants you to be half-hearted about it. And many times when we look at what, where we are, most of the things that we have are self-inflicted. Most of the things that we have. Now I know about uh, uh, racial and justice and all of that but a lot of things we bring on ourselves because we half-heartedly following Jesus we half-heartedly obeying God we make a half-hearted commitment if you make a commitment follow it through and the same thing happens in our marriage we start off and it's like uh, when the novelty wears off and it seems like our love tails off it's like a young person that wants to buy a car. Cameron reminded me today, I got, I'm going to get my license next week. Mama be up here. I want a new car. I said, you want a new car? How are you going to pay for it? <laughs> and he telling me, yeah, I, I can get a charger. Charge what? <laughs> and I said, I hope you get one. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. The love for that charge is going to run out long before them payments do. Somebody's going to have to make them. The novelty. It's like in marriage. You've been married 10 years and then it looks like things start waning. The novelty is wearing them. No. 
we got to go back to God's word. Reestablish what it is that gave us this strength to start with. Understand the fundamental developments of love from God's word. And then enjoy the fruits. They are consistent. God is consistent. And listen. And once we do that, that brings maturity. Because you know, and I'm sure you've heard this, there are some folks who 50 years old hadn't matured yet. Trials of life help you to mature. Trials in a marriage help you to mature in that marriage. You know how to resolve those. They're not the same challenge that they were the first time you encountered them. You deal with them differently. God bless you. Pray that I've said something. Those of you who are viewing us on, through uh, social media and our live stream, we're so grateful that you took time tonight out of your busy schedule to come and visit us tonight. We pray that something was said to encourage you uh, in your life, uh, marriage. We look forward to you uh, uh, coming and visiting with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ located at 7009 Wilson Boulevard. Uh, we pray that you'll come. We'd, we'd love to sit down and talk to you about the Word of God, talk to you about the church. I know there's so much confusion today in this world, and people are looking for a Savior, but they're looking in all the wrong places. Uh, all we have to do is search the Scripture. Jesus said search the Scripture. In them, you think you have eternal life. Those are the ones that testify of Jesus, how he came down from the coast of glory, on this old dusty earth, endured the hardship, suffered the cross, planted in the heart of the earth, resurrected the third day, so people like you and I might have a right to the tree of life. He shed his innocent blood. He endured all of that for a wretch like me. And for that, we ought to be thankful. And in order for us to get with him, the Bible tells us that we need to be buried with him in baptism. That's how we get with him. The blood of Jesus washes away our sins. And we can begin our relationship. This lesson uh, really can be talked about this week is, is relationships. Because we need to have our relationship. The stronger our relationship is with God, the stronger our relationship would be with our brothers and sisters. The stronger our late relationship would even be with the church and what it represents in Jesus. But the, the more we build our relationship with God, the closer we get to God. Now, some folks say, Lord, I'm so close. No, there are obstacles that keep us separated. But the closer we get to God, the better relationship. If you're real in tonight, you hear God's word, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Jesus, and be willing to be buried with him in the watery grave of baptism. Listen to what Paul teaches in Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. How can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not, as so many of us, that were baptized where? In Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. That's an interesting statement. Did you know that? Why would he say we baptized into his death? Something happened in his death. He shed his blood in his death. So if we are baptized into his death, we contact the blood. The blood is what cleanses us from our sins. It washes away our sins. And when we rise out of the baptism, we are walking in a new life. Our features, they're going to be them. The new life is that our heart changes, or it should change. It's a process, just like anything else. It's a process. Somebody said, well, I, I'm, I know for sure I'm sanctified. Well, I doubt that, because sanctification is a process. You don't achieve sanctification overnight. You don't achieve it in a week. It's a growing process. Amen. 
Amen. to be sanctified in the Lord. Now we should be working toward that process. We should be on that path. All of us that have obeyed the gospel should be working toward being sanctified. But it certainly is a process. If you're here tonight, you need to have us to pray with you. Or if you're viewing us, inbox us. Have questions. We'll do our very best to give you a Bible answer, a Bible question. Let me tell you, we don't know everything, but we know where to go to find everything. Amen. If you'll contact us, we'll do all we can to help you. God bless you. I want you to know that I absolutely do love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Let us stay. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the, the peaceful shore. Barely deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I in love. Lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, and love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, Love lifted me. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful message. It's so good to hear uh, Elder Coffee back up there again. Kind of missed him. Would y'all give him a hand? Opportunity to thank you. Thank you for tuning in today and being a part of our worship services. We pray that those things that were said and done on today will benefit and bless into your life that will help you to grow.